friends are doing great out there. If you friends like this, please like and subscribe. Welcome back all subscribers. Anyone new, welcome, welcome. If you friends like this, please like and subscribe, guys. Hit that big old like button. Okay, let's see what's going on with you. Okay, best message. And for those of you who are new, this is where I take astrology with tarot, make a small horoscope for the month using only one of the 12 houses. So let's see. That's a message for Gemini Cancer. Let's go, let's go. Ooh, going straight to that north node. I see that north node coming right out. This is talking about that destiny, right? This is where it appears to be speaking of your karmic gains and soul growth. Ooh. What are you doing in the fifth house of love with some Leo energy? Wow. So you're having this soul growth and kind of this karmic experience going on over here. Um, guys. This is the karmic goal that you are working towards in this lifetime when it comes to your fifth house. It's things that you would love, things that you create. If you're in a band, this is where, you know what, you want to create beautiful music, um, love, having that beautiful relationship, right? Okay, so let's go over here. We're going to use Vesta. And it's about all those karmics and that soul. This is the spirit, the goddess within your spiritual center and your quiet dignity. Going straight on that north node over here is going to Leo. The energy is flamboyant, dramatic, proud, passionate. It focuses on the importance of self-belief and that's exactly what it's talking about. I mean, that you literally couldn't get any better than that, right? It's talking about this is where my self-belief is. This is my karmic goal. This is what I need to move towards. This is what I truly want within my life. <clears throat> okay, going straight into the fifth house where you have fun, romance, and create things you are proud of. Okay, so let's see what's going on over here. Getting straight into the situation. The situation is taking place in the beginning of the month, the middle of the month, and the end of the month. Going straight to this north road first. What is it talking about? The Queen of Wands talking about that Leo energy again. If anybody has Leo rising or heavy in your chart, this is really going to impact that a lot, right? Even more so than, than normal. Um, this is definitely talking about that courage and confidence. The independence that's, you know, that you're focused on. Right, bringing in that freedom. Okay. Into that Leo. You know. Don't have those negative thoughts. Freeing yourself from the negative thoughts, things that self-impose you, things that restrict you. At this time right now of the month, in the very beginning of the month, is talking about freeing yourself from the restrictions of what your North Node is doing. Um, you are on this, you know, this... Uh, karmic growth and journey so you really need to get out of your head um really talking about there is you know um, this entrapment feeling feeling like i'm not moving in the direction that i need to be removing uh, should be moving in having your personal beliefs there it is self-belief system of maybe i'm not worthy of this maybe i cannot do this but you need to really keep that courage for that determination for this goal up right Really wanting to move with blind faith towards the freedom, my friends. Okay? Do not allow yourself to punish yourself through this situation. Making sure that you are really opening up that, that understanding of intuition to have a better way of moving. Inspiring yourself. Getting innovative within the fifth house. It's saying your fifth house is not very innovative right now. You want the, the determination to free yourself from this situation, but you are actually restricting yourself more than freeing yourself. So it's one of those situations where it's like, I really want this, and I'm going to put all the courage and all of everything I have out there, but then your mind's like, I don't know if I can have that. So you're not allowing yourself to see what it is you truly can have. There's no generosity. 
right? When you're pulling yourself back into your mind, you're pulling yourself back into not having the breakthrough. So it's like craving something, wanting something, but then all of a sudden telling yourself you can't have this or it's not good for me. It's not going to work. You might even be putting a lot of elbow grease into the situation, but you're causing your own blocks, creative blocks, love blocks from your own energy. So clarifying on the Queen of Wands, going after that North Node, that karmic goal, let's go. What is it that I want? Yeah, the passion to be able to open the door. The passion to have what it is that is truly mine within the Four of Wands. When it comes to creative passion, this is where you creatively, passionately want what you know you can. You know deep down inside, guys, you can do this. It's your analytical mind that keeps keeping you back. So I do feel kind of this back and forth energy. Get really, really strong within yourself and say, I'm going to do this. And then it doesn't go exactly the way you want it. So you pull yourself back into the Eight of Swords and trapping yourself, telling yourself, I cannot have this. So it's definitely going to be this back and forth. You really need to keep the hope and promise with the Four of Wands. Keep that creativity. Keep that passionate energy going. Figure out something that you really, truly see and want and hold on to that feeling. Do not allow yourself to say just because it's not working this way, it's never going to happen. Okay. Really free yourself. Clarifying on Making the, the risk, taking the risk, taking the leap of faith, making the new beginning. The new beginning is going to be telling you, I can do this. I'm innovative enough. I'm creative enough. I'm loving enough. I do deserve love, and I can have this just like everybody else in the world. You know, do not allow your past to hold you back. That's what a lot of it is, too. The past thoughts of being out in the cold, the past thoughts of things going awry, the past thoughts of maybe this is not good for me. Past relationships that have gone sour, just because they've gone sour doesn't mean it's gonna be sour now. This is what's holding you back right now, right? So you want to move with moderation and wait for the perfect timing. Making your dreams come true. Seeing the important breakthroughs through your own mind. Encouraging yourself to take, yes. Reconcile with yourself. Allowing your dreams, you see the lizard over here, allow those dreams to come true. Hold this wand out to yourself and say, no more of that. This will bring back that passion because it shows you already have the passion. The passion. The problem is, is that the focus is on the self-belief of, I cannot have this. It's not going my in my favor. So by mid-month... Take the risk towards your dreams. That's really what it is. Look at this. Take the risk towards the dream. So by mid-month, yeah. since you're still in despair and lack of faith, come on, guys. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. You could be dealing with Aquarius or somebody who's giving you lack of faith not allowing the relationship to go through, having clashes, having to put up boundaries, disconnecting this for now you're feeling like, okay, everything that I've done, now they're putting me back into this lack of faith that this is going to work. This is becoming more of a burden than necessary. This person may be having some kind of stubbornness around you, you know, and they're causing this mutual loss, not allowing you to build where you need to build on this situation. And they're stirring up all of this energy um, to where it's almost like where I got strong, where I was trying to get strong, where I'm trying to build. You're still holding me back. This person is holding you back. It literally could be in Aquarius, my friends. I'm just saying or in Aries, some kind of fire sign. Because um, I'm telling you, this is the person. This is what's going on. You have to break this karma. This is becoming, a, this could be a karmic relationship. Um, 
Yeah, because we have the North Node. So definitely a karmic relationship. They may be manipulating the situation to where you feel like the more that they keep doing this stuff, I'm having lack of faith that this person is going to actually talk to me the way I want them to talk to me. I want them to come forward. I want this relationship to move up the ladder, and it's not working. So it's almost like, oh boy, where you're trying to make a breakthrough, it's not happening because they're holding you back from doing so. It could be dealing with a Sagittarius. Oh my God, they just keep thieving and it's almost like stop thieving the relationship. Stop thieving the love from me. It's almost like as the more that we try to come together, the more you want to clash with me. This is encouraging you though, just to still have your self-expressions. Keep doing what you need to do though, guys, right? And you're having the intuition now that you understand that this person is greedy. Why are they greedy? Because if anybody is holding you back from a relationship and not giving you what you want, they're only getting from the relationship what they want, so therefore it's greed. Because they're not giving back the way they, you know, you should be getting back. So having the understanding of what it is I'm reflecting on, this is going to give you a groundbreaking or shocking moment um, as you're kind of shocking this three of coins over here, sticking this spear into it, getting this shocking result pretty much from your intuition of how they're focused and where your focus is really going. Um, and I do feel like you are having an understanding that, you know what, they're not focused on me. They're focused on themselves. You could be dealing with a very selfish person. Um, I'm sorry, that's exactly what it feels like. Um, could also be dealing with a Capricorn or a Taurus um, who you just feel is very selfish, very self-centered, and only worry about themselves and what they get out of the situation, which still makes greed, greedy towards self. So going into the end of the month, going after your own personal goals, shattered dreams within the relationship, but going for what it is you truly need for the long-term success within the relationship. So you're having this understanding that this domestic disharmony, this broken family, this broken relationship is just struggling, struggling, struggling. And the more you're realizing this, the more you're going after your own karmic path over here. Guys, this is a very karmic relationship. You can just feel it. There are so many chains around this um, reading, right? Because it's hard to let go of a karmic. So the more that they're doing whatever they're doing, you're having this better understanding of where it's going. Over here, it's like you're playing it safe. You're doing what you want to do. Going after what you want because there's no, fi yeah, there's no fixing this. Trying to balance out the situation. They're trying to balance out the situation with you, even though they're still not giving you what you want. So it's like now they're going to come back and try to give to you what they want to give to you. I'm sorry, this is a very selfish, I'll give to you what I want to give to you and I'll give you what I want. And it almost feels like as soon as you cold shoulder them or you kind of walk away and do what you want to do, this is when they want to come back and try to kind of um, wean you back in, right? Pull that chain. And that Pulling that chain is pulling it towards yourself or pulling it towards them, excuse me. So it's almost like you get way far away and they pull that chain towards them. Um, and then it becomes, right now it feels like it's going to be a tug of war. Why? Because now you have the own personal goals at the end of the month. You have the realization of what they're doing. So it's definitely going to be this tug of war. And this two of coins over here is tossing these two coins as a tug of war. This is where you're realizing this relationship is struggling. I need to move on. Um, it's not working with the three of cups. I'm going after your own happiness. But they really want to have a talk about the situation. Even though you have the long-term success of what it is you truly want within your goals and speaking of what it is you truly want, there's a lot of growth in this situation coming in the mid-month. The growth is coming from the intuition opening up and you having the realization, this is not what I want, truly don't want. I truly need to go after what I truly want. Okay, and it's not working. And this is where you're going to actually move forward for your rest and peace. You need relaxation. At the end of the month, you're going to feel a little more relaxed about the situation as everything is surfacing up. And the more that you're kind of meditating and taking rest, the more you're healing. The more you're healing, the more you're getting what? Empowered, guys. This is where you're going to engage with your own compassion to thoughtfully care about what your self-belief is, what you truly need, and what you need to do for the bigger plans of your victory. You're going to be able to see the future of what it is you need, right? 
if you need to actually travel away, and I mean literally get out there, travel away, then you're going to do so, right? Pack your bags, go on a vacation, go see mom and dad, do whatever it is you need to do. But it's definitely saying, I'm going to have to travel away now. For some of you, it might just be within the mind. We have, you know, every, there's lots of thoughts over here with the swords. But however it is, you're going to align yourself and pursue what it is you truly need. Right? And really feeding yourself now all this energy, all this confidence with the Six of Wands. Saying, you know what? There is victory out there for me. I'm getting my inner strength back again where I was trying over here, but it's still back and forth. Now we understand where the back and forth is coming from, from the beginning of the month. You're getting strong, but you're still in the Eight of Swords. So it's almost like, okay, so why were you in the Eight of Swords? Because every time you get strong, they bring you down. That's why. And then the past thoughts of how they leave you out in the cold, and then they want to come back and try to begin new beginnings with you. So definitely feeling why you are trapped within this area of strong, sad, trapped, strong. It makes so much sense. Because it feels like right when you get empowered to want to do something you want, here they come back in, reeling you in for their own needs, their own obsessions, their own powers. It almost feels, you know, a lot of karmic relationships are sometimes when they're like this and they're very manipulative and you know, power struggles and stuff. It could be an ownership thing. They kind of think they own you. So they feel like that chain that's around your leg is more like a leash, right? Kind of keeping you on a leash. That's for somebody. Um, so there could be this feeling like they own you more than love you, right? Because there's no love cards in here, guys. So that's why I feel, except for the four of wands. So I do feel like it's they might feel like they own you. You might even feel like that too. Like this love relationship throughout the months, the years, the weeks has become more of how they control you, keep a leash on you, and own you. Like you're mine. You can't go away. I own you. We're meant to be together. And for some reason, and because of that karmic relationship, it'll make them believe that, you know, you're meant to be together. But um, that's not the truth. Nobody is meant to be together in anything like this. This is not love. So let's see how they what their let's see what, what this relationship says. What they say about you. They say they're not going to express their love to you because there's no reason. This is a past life relationship, which I said to past life karmic soul, uh, karmic soulmate. <clears throat> they want to come back to you and have forgiveness and learning. But you know, guys, and I see this a lot. There's the reconciliation right here. It's like they put you through that and they might want to want to come re reconcile with you. But we see, also see it down here, though, too. It's almost like I said, down here in the end of the month. As soon as you start getting your own personal goals, going after things you want, doing the things you want to do, and you start getting away from them, they want to pull that, that leash back, right? They want to pull you towards them. And this is paying attention to those red flags, right? Because they want to give that relationship a chance again. The only problem is they don't know what a real relationship is. And it has a lot to do with codependency. Boy, that didn't surprise me. Ownership, codependency, obsession. Well, hey, take it how you want it. Um, but you get to the point where it's like they're not even playful anymore because, and I do believe this, I do believe they're not playful anymore because it looks more like it's, it's um, more stubbornness, more do what I say, it's more boss mode than it could ever be playful. So there is no playfulness there. I, I don't see that because it's more bossy. Like, how are you going to be playful if you're bossy? Where are they going to boss you to be playful? Well, it's time to be playful now. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. I didn't realize it was uh, 6 o'clock in the evening and it's playtime. That doesn't sound very playful. That sounds like you're my boss and you tell me what when it's time to play, when it's time to do this, when it's time to do that. Um, like I said. So, no, I don't see them being playful either. And in the past, they may have been very playful because it's coming up on the Three of Cups. So there was a time there was joy, happiness, and playfulness, and now it's saying there's no play. 
kind of like when I say it's intimacy time, it's intimacy time. So you guys are calling in a soulmate. That doesn't surprise me at all. It doesn't. Okay. This person that you're calling in is very flirty. Ooh, I like that. You could even have an engagement and marry this person. This person might even have children, or you may have children with this person in the future. Okay. It is saying that you will probably not be taking a reconciliation with this person because you're fully aware of what was going on. So definitely, what's this card? Release your ex. Yeah. Well, we see that over here as you're kind of moving away. Why? Because they have unrequited love. And like I said before, it doesn't feel like a real love relationship. It feels more like something, it's, it's karmic, the North Node. So it's something you have to learn so that you can free yourself from this energy for one for once and for all, let's not have any more past life relationships with this person, period, end of story. You know, I don't, you know, free ourselves. We'll never meet again. Because I'll tell you right now, when you die, you definitely don't want to come across this person again. Because, you know what, it's like, it's done. It's done and over with. Okay? It's like, finally, you've cut that tie, and this will be, what? Justice. Wow. Maybe be getting a divorce from this person so that you can go after your own ace of cups. Wow. And might have a king of cups coming in. Whoop. Get in that water sign. But for now, it's saying you just need to keep your boundaries straight and know exactly where you're going for your own victory, my friends. Okay? Because this combativeness, this fighting, this control that they have, this is all that they want. They strive on disagreements. They strive on being in power. Oh, wow. It's almost like they gain strength from it. It's like a vampire over here. Okay. And that was it for you, my friends. Until next time, peace and love. Bye-bye.